How's it going out there? Welcome from H2 Tech Video. Today we're going to be going over the pros and cons of the Kobo Mini e-reader, which is uh, one of the smallest, lightest e-readers on the market. Uh, in fact, I haven't seen one smaller than this, but I'm not 100% sure if it is the smallest, so I'm not going to fully quote that, but as far as I know, this is the smallest. Um, this e-reader, 5-inch touchscreen display. It's a 4.7 ounces, so literally it's in my hand and I barely feel it. I can probably lift it with one finger if I can balance it, try to. Um, it's 0.4 inches thin, so again, it's super duper thin. Literally, uh, there's my pen, and it's literally as thin as my pen is. Um, now, to compare it, I'm going to compare it real fast to the uh, Kindle Fire. So you can see in relation exactly how small the screen is. So if I put it on top of my Kindle, there's my little notepad. That's how small it is. So it literally fits in the corner of a Kindle. Okay, so it's it's super small, super light. It's an e-ink display, e-reader. Uh, it is not color. Um, and let's jump into this guy and let's see how good it is. Okay, I want to start with the pros because I always start there. Uh, first of all, again, I already talked about the weight. It's very light. Again, 4.7 ounces. So this is something that you could literally toss in your purse, toss in your bag. And it's literally so light that you would probably forget that you have it on you. So you got to be a little careful there. Um, next pro is going to be it has a great battery life. It's up to two weeks. Um, now most e-readers are now between two weeks and two months so anything over two weeks is going to be good you don't have to worry about charging it often um, next thing is it's a great price it's only seventy nine dollars it does come in white and black um, for the price it is a really good e-reader as far as I know this is one of the cheapest ones you can get on the market so you're not going to pay a lot uh, it does fit right in the palm of your hand that's literally the palm of my hand that's fitting right there. Um, next thing is uh, it has a really responsive uh, uh, keyboard. Let me go to a search, the search section real quick and I can type something for you. I was very impressed that um, even though it is the e-ink uh, display, the touch is still really responsive. Um, let's, after it connects to the network, we can try it out. So let's see. Hello, Mr. Kobo. And I did not do the best job on that. Now, normally it's better if you actually hold it and type, not type on the table. So, so Kobo Mini. Okay, normally it is a little bit better. Maybe I'm getting stage fright because I'm in the video, but um, basically you don't have to like go back and touch keys twice. Um, it tends to again pick up the first time you tap. The only downside is that because it's so small, uh, the keyboard literally hits right at the edge of the uh, screen there. So uh, typing on these outer keys can be a little tough. But for the most part, when I type, um, I've been very impressed by how responsive the keyboard is. So that was definitely a pro that I give it. Um, and to be honest, that's probably the last pro. Other than that, the interface is very simple and easy to use. So um, if you can learn it really quick, uh, you even have some uh, extra functionalities built in. Um, when you go to the menu here and you go to settings, you actually have a built-in web browser, so you can do some basic browsing. You even have Sudoku and chess built in, and a little fun Sketchpad app as well. So um, it's basic. It will download your books for you. If you know if you're looking for just a portable reading experience, it can deliver that. Now let me jump over to the to the con side, and the, um, I'm going to talk about the the web browser. It has a browser, but the browser isn't that good. So uh, if you need to just Google something really quick, you can do that. Um, just to show you real quick, if you do um, actually when you go right to the web browser, um, it will take you right to Google. And there's Google right there, and I can type in like uh, family. And hit enter, and then 
I probably hit it too fast. So it will give you a search. It will show you a couple of the web pages. Now I did try to go on Facebook and that was pretty much a fail. It did not run Facebook very well. Um, so that's why I say it's kind of like a pro and a con that it has a web browser but the browser isn't that good. So don't expect to do any crazy um, like internet surfing because it just really can't handle it. Okay. Um, next con is going to be that um, it's it's kind of slow in my opinion, but I guess when you're dealing with uh, e-readers that are eating technology, which is what this is, which is that gray, like mimicking a, a page look, these tend to be a lot slower in response. So even though when I tap, it definitely does catch it. You know, it's usually a couple of seconds before it actually pulls it up and loads it. Whereas if you are on an iPad or, or a tablet, you tap and it's instant. Same way with smartphones. So the touch is you have to be patient with it. It is not lightning quick. The second thing is that at, at, at certain times I thought it might have been a little too small. And again, I kind of referenced how the keyboard uh, really hits the edge and which makes it difficult to type any letters that are um, on that border kind of wire the edge there and even the fact that I'm, I'm in the section where you search for books you can only see five books at a time and you have to keep paging paging over because the screen is so small you can't really show a lot at one time I, I couldn't imagine reading a book on this because I felt like I'd be reading forever um, just because of you know you can only get so many words on a page at this size so the size works at, to your benefit sometimes and then it works against you other times um, the next thing I say is a con is that there was no backlight and um, a lot of the uh, other e-reader brands are actually adapting the backlit technology. For example, the uh, Paperwhite Kindle has it um, as well as the uh, Nook Simple Touch with uh, the glow light. So um, in my opinion, every e-reader needs to have this feature because an e-reader this small, if you clamp a book light on here, I mean, imagine how much room it would take, you know? So if this had a backlight, it would make it, it would really kind of add value to it because you could even sit and read this in the dark at night, whereas right now you'd have to clamp a bulky book light on it just to be able to read in low light or dark environments. So I felt like they should have added that. It might have ro rose the price a little bit, but I think it would have been worth it. Um, so that's about it. This, you know... There's only so much it does, so I mean, I can only go over so many things uh, in in the long run. And again, the way I'm kind of rating uh, products now is I'll, I'll give it either a worth it or a waste of time. So in this case, I will give it the worth it, and that's because, I mean, for $79, it's a really good price. I feel like this could be a great starter e-reader for kids, especially kids that are responsible that like to read. Uh, I can't really see an adult using this seriously because, um, you know, again, the text is very small, so reading can be a challenge. And I don't know, I feel like it has a place, it has a market that would be interested in it. Um, so hopefully you'll take kind of the comments I've, I've thrown out there with a grain of salt. Overall, I did like it, and I did feel like uh, Kobo did a good job. And especially if you're going to make it this small, they they made it competitively priced at $79. So someone looking for a basic or starter e-reader, this is somewhere you can start. Okay? Hope you guys found this helpful. Make sure you like the video if you did find it helpful. Make sure you subscribe if you take videos, and pass the video along to a friend. All right? Take care and have a good one.